Steve Waters' Whirly Gig from the list C of the Grade 3 Associated Board Syllabus. This is the syllabus that finishes at the end of 2008. Clearly with Whirly Gig, so it's a piece very much inspired by the idea of the jig or the jig. In other words, a, a fairly lively dance in 6-8 time. Important to remember with a 6-8 is that that's got two beats in the bar. In other words, if you're listening to something and you find your foot's tapping, that's the beat. And, and in this beat, it's not one, two, three, four, five, six. It's one and a two and a one and a two and a very much one, two, one, two. Um, and so the kind of feel that the piece is looking for is, is really quite rhythmical like that. And you'll find that you can get that by making sure that the first and the fourth quavers are, are nicely emphasized. Um, the first the, the the first beat is is often a long note um, a dotted million very often um, the piece is marked jocoso which means uh, joyfully uh, that doesn't mean to say that it's got to be particularly fast and obviously for grade three you can't really um, ask for, for for something to be really really fast but um, clearly a degree of speed is required to create a, a feeling of, of of being joyful Important with this piece is that it's probably every single note is free stroke and it's very much um, close to being a sort of hands-on type piece where if you, if you think of the kind of arpeggio allocation of fingers to strings that you get with your index on the on the G, your middle on the B, your A finger on the top string, it's that kind of piece very much all the way through. It's also um, very much like the saw piece, um, one where even though a lot of times the left hand um, note values are, f are fairly short, nonetheless there's a chord shape and so you're keeping fingers on. For example, if you look at the first bar, you've got your third finger on the D and the second finger on the A, and even though those are written as quavers, you keep them on so that you end up with this resonant chord shape. By the time you've added the F sharp at the end, you've got a full D major chord shape there. And that is true pretty well every single bar of the piece um, so basically keep fingers on pretty well all the time. The other general point about the piece is that <clears throat> there are quite a lot of short repeats and it's important to remember that the, uh, the regulations with the, with, with the Association Board exams say that you don't do repeats except for only a few bars um, and certainly for my money, if at all possible, it's good to do these repeats because they're literally only four bars and it helps the piece have more shape um, because after all the repeats are there for a reason. Um, so then the only, really the only particular tricky um, part of this piece, if you look on the fourth line, um, just after the first and second time bars, the last two bars of the line, we have the D, C natural, F natural, and open E there, okay? You'll notice that your third finger is written on the C on the third string. It's really important, it's not in first position. It has to be there, that's where you play it. And so you've got your third finger on the C, and your fourth finger on the D, uh, on the F natural, sorry. And then you do thumb, I, M, A, and it goes. Simple as that. And then the next bar, you take your third finger back two frets to the B flat, and your fourth finger is now on the same fret. It's exactly the same um, idea. The chord is on, the strings are, are, are ringing over each other, but this time it's thumb I A M. So we've got the C and the F on frets five and six, fret five on the C, fret six on the F natural. So it's thumb I M A. Thumb, I, A, M. And the next bar, bar 21, just like the, uh, the bit we just started with the C and the F, but this time you do. So it's thumb, I, M, A, M, A. Keeping all the notes ringing on as much as you possibly can. Keeping the fingers upright so there's no danger of notes being muted by the finger next door. So you've got your R21. Then, and we've got bar 21, 2, 3, bar 24. 
So in third position, you've got your first finger on the F. Quite a big stretch to the C natural. That's the third string, fifth fret, with your third finger on the C natural again. The same C natural as you played before. And then you make space for the open B. And then the fifth fret, A, with your fourth finger. So it's first finger, third finger, open. another of those places where because you're playing a C on the third string and then the B on the second string it can feel a bit strange to go from the high, low, high note on the on the low string to the lower note on the higher string but again if you just do your right hand pattern and it can help to write to, to pencil on your right hand pattern over the top it kind of fixes in what you're doing a little bit better the only other thing to think about really is the end um, if we go from the last line halfway through the line we've got the second time bar you come back out of the phrase Complete rest, so try to damp everything, preferably with the left hand rather than making a flat right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Two things going on here. Firstly, the top D, we're in the last bar. The top D that you just played there is written as a quaver. So take the finger off, possibly damp it with the right hand, and then the chord, again, it's on the fourth beat of the bar, and it's there. If possible, and it should be possible because you do have the time, when you do the uh, last but one bar with the A and the E and the C sharp, the A's in the bass, and then the last chord is a D. And if you play your A and then the D and leave the A ringing, you can hear the A still keeping on going under the D, and that's not really a very good idea. If possible, try damping the A immediately after playing the D's. What it looks like is you play the A like this, you play the D, put your thumb back on the A, it stops it. You've got the time because there's nothing happening until you play the chord. So from the right hand point of view, it looks like this. You play your, your uh, penultimate bar, play the Ds, damp the A, and then play the chord like that. So I'm going to give the piece once through fairly slowly with no repeats and then run it once up to tempo. One, two, three, four, five, six. to me in the middle of that. Um, it's another piece where it's very important to think about your bass line um, because there are lots of long held bass notes which are important to keep on while the fingers are doing other things.